a couple of things and to make certain that I, I move in limine that these matters not be broached um, on cross-examination. I have intentionally not asked about the content of anybody's interviews and I don't know whether or not any member of the defense intends to attempt to elicit um, testimony about what any particular witness or defendant said who has not testified from uh, Detective Thorpe, but I would ask that the court preclude questioning about what anybody said in an interview um, that has not yet testified. And I don't wanna have to object, like I'm trying to hide something, but I did specifically ask about certain people, um, but I, I intentionally let, I did not go into what the content of any interviews were. So um, in as much as that may be an issue, I would rather if we can address it before the jury comes out. All right, anybody wanna be heard on that? Well, I know that. So, does anybody want to be heard on that? I guess it depends on the question and the reason for it. So that's very broad. So I don't want to agree with, I don't, I don't want the court to just say, yes, that's off limits, but I think we should do a question by question um, objection. Okay. And, and what would your basis be? Hearsay. Hearsay um, as to any witness that has not testified. All right, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I can decide that before I hear sort of what questions being asked. I'll give you an example, if, if I may. You've heard the name Spencer Wright, Your Honor, which is R-I-G-H-T for the uh, Miss Winfrey. Well, it is my belief that Spencer Wright lied, did not tell the truth. He was looking to um, get a deal, a favorable agreement from the district attorney's office through the just through the um, detective as well. And Detective Thorpe took out warrants that then were not followed through. That would not be hearsay because it's not offered for the truth. So I'm, you know, I'm just that's why I say the question by question should be um, continued. Your Honor, having Detective Thorpe testify that Spencer Wright lied necessarily um, gets to what Spencer Wright said. Um, I think it's an improper question to ask him if he lied. I would not think that was what Mr. Steele would be asking, Mr. Steele. Example, it's a very broad objection so I, you asked for a response my response okay. is we should go question by question and your honor the the reason that i um since mr Steele used spencer right um for instance um if the question is did spencer right tell you or did you you know given that mr Steele's assertion is he thinks he lied and therefore mm -hmm. asking him about what he said isn't really offering for the truth of the matter asserted it's, it's hearsay, it's an out-of-court statement, and it, I don't believe that it can be cured with the assertion, well, I believe he lied. If they if he wants to get into what Spencer Wright said, then Spencer Wright can be called as a witness, but I don't think that it's proper to allow Detective Thorpe, one, to characterize, um, not I mean, to talk about, to testify about what Spencer Wright said when I've not opened that door, and there's no... Um, exception that affords him the ability to permissibly elicit that type of testimony from, from the witness. Um, I'll stop there. So I would think that 
If I understand Mr. Steele's argument correctly, if he asks what did Spencer Wright say or who did Spencer Wright say did X, Y, Z, that he wouldn't be eliciting that for the truth of what Mr. Wright said, but to then follow up and say warrants weren't taken out for whomever that person was, I guess. Is that what you're saying? Well, Your Honor, I mean, he could ask whether warrants were taken out based on what Spencer Wright said, but I think that him getting into whether he lied or what he said specifically yeah, I don't would think not he's, be proper. Yeah, I agree with that, but we weren't talking about a question about whether the officer thinks that, or the detective thinks that Mr. Wright lied. It would have been, it, you had said this would be hearsay. And he's offering something that if he asked it wouldn't be for hearsay purposes because it wouldn't be for the truth of the matter. Your Honor, I... So, I, I mean, I can't make a blanket ruling that nobody could ask anything about... But Go ahead. Asking about whether Mr. Steele believes that it's the truth or not, eliciting... Um, specific uh, statements from the witness. It's, a, it's an out-of-court statement that may or may not be considered true. He may say he's not offering it for the truth of the matter, but I think it's akin to um, asking what Detective Thorpe did based on uh, information he got from other people. And the idea is that it wasn't that they, what they said is true. He followed up on it, but I can't talk about what the other people said. And in the same manner that the objection was sustained that I can't even, it's, it's somehow embedded hearsay, this idea that having Detective Thorpe talk about what Spencer Wright said that Mr. Uh, Williams' attorney believes isn't true, somehow is okay because he doesn't believe it's true. It's, it's, the same type of situation where he's asking a question that necessarily relies on hearsay and sort of almost implicitly puts before the jury information that without Spencer Wright testifying, they should not be um, made privy to. And he can ask a question, did Spencer Wright give you information? Did you try to um, confirm it or to, um, you know, disprove it? Based on what Spencer Wright said, did you do certain things? But getting into the specifics of what Spencer Wright said, I believe, is even more improper than, you know, is, is not proper. All right. Well, thank you. <clears throat> okay. We're ready for the witness and the jury. And, oh, I'm sorry. I just want to say one thing. And I... I will be um, I will be asking if he interviewed certain defendants. I will not be asking what they said. Okay. Yes. As a detective measure, it is my understanding that Mr. Excuse me, Detective Thorpe did not interview Mr. Williams. I would object to any questions. Did you interview Mr. Williams? I just don't see the relevance of it. It already came out. I objected to it. Did Mr. Williams come down? It was with um, Mr. Sledge. I objected to that question by the prosecutor. Um, did, this, did Mr. Williams come down? Did you, did you, Mr. Sledge, speak with the police, with Mr. Cope? Did Mr. Williams come down? I asked the court um, at comments on pre-arrest silence under or ORR, and I know it's not a blanket rule anymore, but it's a 403 analysis. I don't see any benefit to it. So again, I don't want Mr. Williams' name to come up. Did you speak with or interview Mr. Williams? Your Honor, I have a response to the court. Go ahead. Judge, on cross-examination of Mr. Sledge, um, Mr., it was elicited that, um, that it was talked about that Mr. Williams encouraged uh, Mr. Sledge to take Kenneth Copeland to the police right. station and that the state um, instructed the witness to not tell the jury that. The fact that 
And then Mr. Slayer somehow said yes. But the fact that that happened and the fact that if that is what's out there, and of course I, I tried, I impeached him, I believe, but the fact that if it's relevant that Mr. Williams encouraged him before Mr. Williams, it, 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 the pre-arrest silence um, prohibition does not apply to if Mr. Williams is encouraging someone to go, did Mr. Williams go with him to, did Mr. Williams ever go down to the police station himself to talk about the fact that his stepfather's house was shot up? That asking about Mr. Williams going down to the police station after it's been talked about that he encouraged someone else to, I think is, is very relevant. If he's encouraging someone else to go, then he can go himself. And it's, it's, I'd have to find the case, but I it specifically. Right. I don't think a question that just says, did you interview A, did you interview B, did you interview C, and the answer is either yes or no, is a comment on pre or silence if they say no. So you may ask that question. Are we now ready for the witness in the jury? Um, I have to, I wanted to ask the court, so will the court allow me to ask um, whether or not <clears throat> Defendant Williams ever, um, not just did he interview him, but will the court permit me to ask if he ever came to offer information about the shooting at his stepfather's house. No, I think that gets a little too close to pre-arrest silence. No. Are we now ready for the jury and the witness? Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Looks like it is. is it? I think it is. Okay. Uh, Detective Thor, before you talked to uh, Kenneth Copeland, did you know that Jeffrey Williams had rented a Corvette before he rented the Great Infinity? No, ma'am. After you... spoke with Mr. Wright, did you also, without talking about what anybody said, speak with a person um, with the last name Stillwell, Termon Stillwell? Yes, ma'am. Did you speak with that person along with ADA Sprinkle? 
Yes, ma'am. And was that in the DA's office? Yes, ma'am. When you mentioned earlier that you put out a uh, picture, a photo of the person entering the barbershop with a gun, I'm going to show you what has been admitted as state's exhibit 292 Charlie, 292 Yankee Charlie 2, and ask you um, if this is generally the depiction that you released to the public. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. And I'm going to now show you state's exhibit. Just one second. Five Yankee. Five Yankee. And ask you whether this is or isn't similar to the photograph that you released to the public. Just one second. And while we're actually pulling up, it's going to be a different exhibit. Um, I'll ask you this. After speaking with Kenneth Copeland, did you also speak with uh, Antonio Sledge? Yes, ma'am. Do you recall who all was in the room or in the interview with Mr. Sledge? Yes, yeah, should be uh, Detective Dennis and Detective Gaither. All right. And did you also speak with Diamante Kendrick? Yes, ma'am. And who was in the room when you interviewed him? Detective Gaither and Detective Dennis. Did you also interview Shannon Stillwell? Yes, ma'am. Right. Who was in the room when you interviewed him? I believe it was Detective Dennis and Detective Gaither on that one also. And were all of these um, interviews captured in the same way that the interviews in normal interview rooms are recorded, audio and video? Yes, ma'am. All right. Show you 296 Yankee. Is 296 Yankee reflective generally of the area that you put out or depicted when you put out the um, photo of the car passing by the barbershop? Yes, ma'am. After you did you learn about a Kelvin Treadwell during the course of your investigation? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever speak with Mr. Treadwell? I believe so. Okay. After um, did you know about a person? by the name of Javaris Bradford before you turned your file over to the district attorney's office? No, I did not. Did you learn about a person named Javaris Bradford afterwards? Yes, ma'am. Do you recall where you first heard the name Javaris Bradford in the course of this investigation? Um, the fall investigation done by uh, Senior 88, Mike Sprinkle and his team. All right. Ariel Bax, had you heard that name prior to turning over the case to the district attorney's office? No, ma'am. Right. Did you learn that name after ADA Sprinkle began looking into this case? Yes, ma'am. What about, um, did you know about a person by the name of Kenya Morton? No, ma'am. Did you learn about Kenya Morton after? You turn the case over to ADA Sprinkle? Yes, ma'am. Did you personally ever pull any phone calls um, from the jail from a Martinez Arnold? No, ma'am, I did not.
where you now did you did you personally ever interview or speak with um, Mr. Williams, Jeffrey Williams? No, ma'am. Okay. Tell me if you interviewed or knew of rather the name Justin Cobb before you turned the case over to the DA's office. Yes, ma'am. Do you remember how you first learned of that name? Uh, yes, ma'am. Did you learn about it before your investigation or did you know of that name before you began the investigation into the murder of Donovan Thomas? No, ma'am, during. Did you speak with Justin Cobb before you turned the case over to the district attorney's office? I do not believe so. Would you tell the jury um, whether after the interviews that you made, um, whether you conducted any other acts to further your investigation, either in conduct, in, in tandem with Mr. Sprinkle or someone else, in order for you to uh, further your investigation into the murder of Donovan Thomas, without telling what anybody said? Okay. Um, yes, I did. What types of other actions did you take to further your investigation? Um, interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, we conducted several interviews afterwards, okay. in which they took the lead. In which who took the lead? 88, uh, senior 88 Mike Sprinkle. And after those interviews and when you collected cell phone records, was it you that plotted them or did you simply aid in collecting the cell phone records? Aid in collecting cell phone records and sent it all over to the ADA's office. Okay. Did after you, before you turned your case over to the district attorney's office, did you uh, execute a warrant for people who were not later indicted for the murder of Donovan Thomas? No, ma'am. Did you, uh, and by a warrant, I mean, did you have a cert or an arrest warrant signed for Antonio Sledge for the murder of Donovan Thomas? Yes, I believe so, I did. <laughs> Is that a person that um, the district attorney's office uh, declined to prosecute for the murder? Yes, ma'am. Did you execute an arrest warrant for Kenneth Copeland? Yes, ma'am. Did the district attorney's office decline to prosecute Kenneth Copeland? Yes, ma'am. Did the district attorney's office indict people that you had not arrested or executed arrest warrants for? Yes, they did. Was one of those persons Javoris Bradford as it relates to the murder of Donovan Thomas? I believe, I believe so. And what about Justin Cobb? I believe so also. And did the district attorney's office um, execute or indict the remaining people that you executed arrest warrants for? I believe so, yes ma'am. How long is it customary to investigate a murder? Do you have a certain timeline that you have to finish it by? No, ma'am. Um, do you close it after one arrest or if there are other suspects or do you continue to investigate? It? Continue to investigate. Is it unusual for you to investigate a murder for over a year? Or is that common? No, ma'am, it's not unusual. Okay. 
And so over the course of a year, can you tell the jury what is it that um, would take a year versus allowing you to finish a murder in 48 hours? I can say to you. Um, you know, I mean, sustain. You might be able to ask them the different, but sustain as to that question. Yes, Your Honor. Would you tell the jury some of the factors um, that led to the length of time that you investigated this particular murder, generally speaking? Um, cooperation, um, other substantial evidence, physical evidence from the scene, mm -hmm. tangible, um, and that there was a series of people that we had to interview to suss out what, what was good leads, what was bad leads. Mm -hmm. Were you ever given any, um, were you ever able to obtain any surveillance footage from a McDonald's on Cleveland Avenue? I believe I was not, not to my knowledge. Um, did you um, make an effort when you obtain information in an interview to follow up on each piece of information or did you just discard some and just... I followed up on. Just one second, Your Honor. Can you describe for the jury where the green store, are you familiar with a place called the green store? Yes, ma'am. What kind of place is the green store? It's one of the local neighborhood convenience stores. Mm -hmm. Mom and Pops. Um, Were you ever able or did anyone ever give you reason to believe there was surveillance footage at the green store of interest to you? Not to my knowledge. When you interviewed um, people who were under arrest, did you make certain to always read them their rights? Yes, ma'am. And if they weren't under arrest, was there ever any reason to read any rights? No, ma'am. All right, just one second. Do you recall the time, the exact specific time that you took the warrants out for the murder of Donovan Thomas, arrest warrants? Um, I believe it was around the month of November. Of what year? 2015. Okay. And do you remember when it was that you turned the case over to the DA's office? January of 2016. Okay. Did you know the name Demise McMullen? Yes, ma'am. Did you learn about that prior to that name prior to turning the case over to the DA's office? No, ma'am. Your Honor, I think that that's all that I have at this moment. All right. Any defense counsel have questions for this witness? Good afternoon, Detective Thorpe. Good afternoon, Mr. Steele. How are you? Fine, sir. How about yourself? Um, 
Can I ask you some questions? Yes, sir. I want to go to um, Sunday morning, January 11th of 2015. Yes, sir. So just to orient you and the jury, um, you're at the Atlanta Police Department with Kenneth Copeland. That's what I'm focused on, okay? Yes, sir. And um, there's something in evidence already. It's a video audio recording. Yes, sir. And you were the one who started or ensured that that room was being video and audio recorded when you were with Mr. Copeland. Fair to say? Yes, sir. Your Honor, it's already in. It's JW, Jeffrey Williams, 241D. May I play it, please? You may. It should come up on your screen. Were you able to hear that? Yes, sir. Okay, and that's fair. That's accurate. Looks looks true. Yes, sir. Okay. So you were asking Mr. Copeland questions about a gray, uh, potentially rental car, Infinity. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. And this is within eight hours, approximately, of uh, the shooting of Mr. Donovan Thomas and the two other people, right? Yes, sir. And when you asked him those questions, Mr. Copeland was there because you had information, I believe, that um, the streets were calling his name about being involved in this crime, right? Yes, sir. So you gave him the opportunity through a conversation you had on the telephone, if he wants, he doesn't have to, but if he wants to come in and talk to you, that's what we're going to talk about, his possible being involved in the shooting, right? Yes, sir. All right. Now, when he told you, no, he didn't know Mr. Maddox, no, there was nothing to do with a gray colored Infinity rental car, um, you had already, obviously, information that he may have been involved with that car. Is that fair to say? Sustained. The car that I just referred to, the gray rental car Infinity. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, he denied any knowledge or access to that type of vehicle that we just saw in Jeffrey Williams 241D, right? Yes, sir. And you had a reason to believe that that, that he was not being truthful, correct? Yes. Objection, Your Honor, as to the um, prop, improper form the question. Sustained. You, knew, you did not, at that point, you had information contrary to his denial, true? Uh, yes, sir. Now, he also, at that same 
interrogation, meeting, interview, whatever you know you want to call it is fine, <clears throat> with Mr. Copeland. You also asked him where he was at and around the time of the shooting. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. And he told you two places of interest. One is the McDonald's, right? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Um, mischaracterizes um, regarding at or around the time of the shooting. I believe. Tells you about a McDonald's, right? Yes, sir. He told me about McDonald's. And that McDonald's, the jurors have seen pictures and they've heard the address, but we're talking about on Cleveland Avenue. Fair to say? Yes, sir. And it's near a laundromat. If you're familiar with the area. Yes, sir. Okay. Near the laundromat, near the auto um, place, and across the street is um, other establishments, including a uh, gas station convenience store. Fair? Yes, sir. And to your knowledge, at that time, um, were there cameras, when I say cameras, surveillance cameras, um, on the laundromat building? I believe so, there was. Were there cameras on the McDonald's? I believe so, yes, sir. Were there cameras on the auto parts store? I believe so, yes, sir. Were there cameras across the street on the convenience store or gas station? Yes, sir. Now, when you went, I, I assume you followed up on that alibi, true? Yes, sir. When you went to those establishments, or did you go to those establishments? Yes, sir. I, I object on the basis of um, assuming facts on an evidence. There was no... The question was regarding an alibi and base. I think it's an improper question. Did you go to those establishments? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you attempt to locate and ask for use subpoena power? The jurors may not use a search warrant um, to get any of those video surveillance cameras if they existed. Uh I went and checked to see the video footage. So if they had video footage that could be of use, then that's when I'll go and obtain a search warrant to indicate in the search warrant, this is the time frame I'm looking for. But uh, I believe at McDonald's, they already had reached their 15 day mark. So the, the video footage I think was already overwritten, I believe. Now, who did you, you, you already told the jury that you would take notes and put this all in your reports, correct? Yes, sir. And you have to do that. You have to document what you're doing, right? Yes, sir. Because sometimes cases are tried. In our case, we're nine years after, nine plus years after January 10th, 2015, right? Yes, sir. Can you tell the jurors whether you ever put in your report anywhere that you saw the video at the McDonald's or you spoke with somebody? Um, no, I believe I, I, I did not. Is there a reason you did not put that detail? In your report, no, because I didn't understand any evidence from that, so that's why I didn't document in my report, but I had it in my notes. Okay, how about your notes then? Did you ever? Where are your notes today? I can't find my notepad. And to be fair to the jury, I asked you about your notes previously. Fair? Yes, sir. And you said the same thing. You can't find it, right? Yes, sir. It's just, it's gone. Yes, sir. Now, if we, how about the, you mentioned McDonald's, how about the auto parts store, that video surveillance? Can you tell the jurors what you did to secure that surveillance on January 10th, 2015, the relevant period of time? Um, same time, I believe I went out there maybe a couple of days later to look because I focused on the McDonald's and that was he was talking about. And um, I did not attain any video from them either. What did what did that person tell you? Um, if, uh, if you remember, objection is hearsay. Uh, sustained. Let me ask you this way: In your report, did you put anything about going to the auto parts store to inquire about their surveillance? No, sir. Okay, and it would be in your notes. Yes, sir. Notes are gone. Yes, sir. Can't find. Can't find. Sustained. Across the street, the convenience store gas station, their surveillance equipment. Did you go there and ask them for theirs? Uh, I believe I would ask them for theirs. You did not? I, I believe I did not. Okay. And how about the laundromat across the street from the McDonald's? I don't think, they, I don't think their system was working at that time. Do you remember who you spoke with? 
No, they were limited in annual. And the same questions, it's not in your report, correct? Correct. Okay. You mentioned the green store. Do you know the true name of the green store by any chance? No, sir, not offhand. Okay, that's fine. But it's called the green store for the obvious reason that it was green? Yes, sir. All right. And how far, if you know, and if you don't know, just say, I'm not familiar. Would you say the green store is from the location, God forbid, that Donovan Thomas was um, shot? I want to say maybe a couple of blocks. Okay. We're talking close, right? Yes. All right. Yes. Now, Mr. Copen told you that on January 10th, 2015, and when I say told you, I'm still sticking to January, the next day or eight okay. hours later. He told you also that he was um, at around the green store at around the time of Mr. Tom, uh, Mr. Thomas being shot. Fair to say? Yes, sir. And are you aware? Did you find out? Did you look for it? Whether the green store had uh, surveillance cameras? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. And did the green store have surveillance cameras? Uh, I believe their system was down also. Okay. And who did you speak with? I can't recall the person's name. And did you put the, it's not in your report. Fair to say? No, sir. And the notes are gone. Yes, sir. Now, surveillance footage is a good tool. Would you agree with that for yes, law sir. enforcement? Yes, sir. Because a surveillance camera, if it's properly working, no one tampered with it, it doesn't really have any motivation or agenda. Is that fair? Yeah. Vague in Everyone. True. True. And it just captures, if it's working properly, the images that it, ha that it has in front of it, right? True. So we wouldn't really have to debate whether Mr. Copeland or others were at a McDonald's if we had that surveillance. Objection calls for speculation. Sustained. Right. Now, with regards to Mr. Copeland, when he told you um, he made the denial of the infinity, remember the, what we just played? Mm -hmm. Um, at that point in time, that got you, I assume, so you tell us, that, that got you interested in maybe he's not being forthright. Is that fair? Objection, Your Honor, as improper questions regarding. Sustained. You questioned whether he was being um, truthful with you. Is Objection that fair to say? Still, Your Honor. Sustained. Did you have questions on his answers that he denied the infinity? Objection. Objection. Obje I I'm said, sorry. I, I said objection, babe. The question was, did you have questions? Questions on his sustained. How did you take it when Mr. Copeland said, no, I don't have anything to do with no memory of the infinity? Objection, Your Honor, vague. Overruled on that basis. Okay, how did I take it? And yeah. relevance, Your Honor. Sustained. Okay. All right. Let me ask you about um, Jeffrey Williams, okay? You found out that Jeffrey Williams rented a Corvette vehicle from Hertz rental car um, at the airport, fair to say? Yes, sir. And when I say rented, on or about January 6, 2000, January 6, 2015, something like that. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. If my day's wrong, I'm not trying to, yeah. it's around that time, right? Yes, sir. And then uh, the infinity on January, on around January 7, uh, 2015, fair to say? Okay. Did I find out if he rented it January 7? You found out later yes, that sir. Mr. Williams, in his name, there's an infinity vehicle rented, right? Yes, sir. Through the TA's office. Yes, sir. Through, tell the jurors what evidence you have that Jeffrey Williams um, drove that Infinity rented vehicle. Objection, Your Honor, regarding um, matters that are within the province of the jury in terms of evidence. Rephrase. Do you have any evidence to Rephrase. share with the jury? That's the issue that she's rephrased the question. I think that's a proper question. Rephrase the question. I'm 
going to have to um, move on to another topic. Let me ask you about. Um, Do you want to encourage one more? Sure. You've taken it anyway, so go ahead. Yeah, I don't have any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Miss, yes, Miss Steele. All right. Same yeah. here, sir. Miss Chart, you're standing up. You have questions? It's my turn. Well, I mean, you're up and nobody else is, so I guess you can take your turn now, and then we'll see whether anybody else has questions. Thorpe. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. All right. My name is Max Shard. I represent Shannon Stillwell, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Um, do you have a copy of your report in front in front of you? No, sir. Okay. Let me see if I can get you. Here. I don't know. Oh, if Mr. Shire has one, I have one that he can use. I believe it doesn't matter. And, Your Honor, may I just can approach and, and bring it up? And I'm not asking Detective Thorpe to refer to it at all right now. I just want him to have it handy in case he needs to. Can you that? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Detective Thorpe, I'm going to ask you about October 19th of 2015. Okay. Okay. Um, and that is the day for reference. Do you, do you know the what happened on that day? Off uh, the top of your head? Yes, sir. Okay. That was the day that you spoke to the person who identified himself as Nicholas Robinson, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I'd like to talk to you about how that happened. Um. Zone One Day Watch contacted you about having a person in custody, correct? Yes, sir. And you were informed by the your fellow officers 
that this person was named Nicholas Robbins? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's the way, to your understanding, this person identified himself to the police? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this Nicholas Robinson, he was in custody, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. He had, on that day, on October 19, 2015, he had been arrested for a felony offense of theft by receiving, correct? Objection, yes, Your Honor, uh, as to, never mind, withdraw the objection, right? And he was also, had probation warrants? Yes, sir. Okay. The reality is, Nicholas Robinson was on his way to Rice Street, to 901 Rice Street, the Fulton County Jail. Yes, sir. And your fellow officers called you and said, this person may have information on something you're working on. Yes, sir. Okay. And you decided, well, before, before I get there, um, on direct, as I understand your testimony, you testified that you did not think Nicholas Robinson was trying to help himself out by talking to you. Yes, sir. Okay. And when I say help himself out, I'm talking about get consideration on charges that were now pending against him. Are we on the same page? Yes, sir. Okay. And your testimony is you do not believe that he was trying to get Objection. help for those. Objection. Yes, answer. Is that your testimony? You don't believe he was trying to get curry favor and get help with his pending charges? Yeah, he may have, but I was, that was not up to me. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Prior to October 19, 2015, prior to the date he had been arrested, had Nicholas Robinson ever come up to you and tried to give you information? No, sir. Okay. You decided to conduct a formal interview with this person who, to you, was known as Nicholas Robinson? Yes, sir. Okay. What was he wearing at that time of the uh, formal interview? Was he in Rice Street? Okay. Blues yet? Relevance. Sustained. Okay. During the course of your interview with Nicholas Robinson, he continued to refer to himself as Nicholas Robinson, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you referred to him as Nicholas Robinson because you believe that was his identity, correct? Yes, sir. And he never corrected you? Yes, sir. And you all, without getting into what was said, you all spoke about the shooting of Donovan Thomas? Yes, sir. Okay. After this interview on October 19, 2015, Investigator Gaither informed you that this man's name was not, in fact, Nicholas Robinson, correct? Yes, sir, but it was not after the interview. It was during the interview. Okay, during the interview. Yes, sir. Investigator Gaither um, informed you that this man was not, in fact, Nicholas Robinson. Correct. And his name was Spencer Wright. Correct. Okay, and just to be clear, when we say during the interview, it was well into the interview. It, the interview hadn't just started. You guys had been talking for some time. Yes, sir. Okay. And this interview happened on October 19, 2015. Yes, sir. Okay. The warrants that you took out on the Donovan Thomas case were taken out. I know you testified that it was in November sometime. Yes, sir. It was actually taken out on October 20th, 2015. Okay. Isn't yes, that sir. correct? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. I want to talk to you a little bit about your reports. Um, you've been with, you've been in law enforcement for how long? 30 years and eight, nine months. 30 years and nine months. Mm -hmm. And all that with Atlanta Police Department? Yes, sir. Okay, when you were brought on by the police department, before you even started on the, on the you started on the streets, right? Yes, sir. On the streets. Okay, before you even started, they trained you on writing reports, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and throughout these 30 years of service you have with Atlanta Police Department, you've obtained refreshers, taken refresher courses on writing reports, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you have been trained that your reports are to be accurate, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, about accurate about evidence received? Yes, sir. Accurate about things that have been told to you? Yes, sir. 
and accurate about the work you do on a case, correct? Yes, sir. You were supposed to document that work, correct? Yes, sir. And it's also, these reports are also supposed to be complete, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So, as per your training, work you've done on the case, your, your reports are to include a complete accounting of this work, correct? Yes, sir. Now, you testified, and I'm, I'm not going to retread over things that Mr. Steele covered, but just briefly. You testified that you went to the McDonald's to search for a surveillance video. Yes, sir. Okay, and what date did you do that? Um, I believe it was not the 11th, it was the 12th. January 12th, January 12th. Okay, January 12th, you oh. went to the McDonald's? Yes, sir, I believe it was. To look for a video? Yes, sir, I can't recall exactly what day it was. But you're pretty sure it was January 12th? Yeah, it, it was in that time range. It, it was like a two or three months later. Okay, did you not just testify that when you went to the, the McDonald's, they informed you that the video had been taped over? Yes, it, most of it is on a 15-day cycle, so I don't ever know when they're 15, 15 15 day cycle starts or ends. Okay, but if you went on January 12th, that would have been at two days. Yeah, once again, do not know when their 15 day, everybody's system is different. Man, I follow the same 15 days like as in the months. It's like sometimes we get them and the video can be two hours behind, two hours ahead based on that particular location. So I do not know when their 15-day rotation was. Who went with you? I went by myself. Who um who did you talk to at McDonald's? What was her name? I cannot recall her name. Did you record any of this? No. And none of this is in your report? Yes, sir. Yes, it's not. Yes, it's not. Okay. The auto parts store. When did you go speak to people at the auto parts store? Maybe a couple of days later. And who went with you? Nobody. And is that recorded? No, sir. And is that mentioned in your reports for APD? No, sir. Right. When did you realize you lost your notepad? Objection on irrelevance. Um, I cannot recall. I knew that um, upon hearing the indictment, I went looking for the case file, and I could not find locate the case file. Did you not hand over your notepad to the DA's office when you handed over your file? No. Okay. Okay. Um, let's talk about the green store. Um, the green store is formerly known as Mommy's Grocery, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and that's on Glen Street. Yes, sir. Uh, about 100 yards from where Glen intersects with McDaniel Street, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you would agree quarter mile from uh, the scene where Donovan Thomas was shot? Yeah, yeah about a block. About a block, block, block and a half, two blocks, maybe. Block and a half to two blocks? Yeah, possibly. Probably. To drive from the green store to that scene about a minute? Probably less than that. Less than a minute, okay. Depending on the traffic. Gotcha. Okay, as I understood on direct, your testimony about surveillance at the green store was no one told you they had surveillance. Well, I believe, it's, I believe they said the system was not working that day or something like that. No, when, I'm talking about what Miss Love asked you. I believe you said that no one told you that they had surveillance. Is that not correct? I can't recall, but I believe I, it was to that degree that they didn't. the video system was not working, so they didn't have video. Okay. If the video system was not working, they didn't okay. have video. So your testimony isn't that no one told you they had surveillance. Your testimony is you went to the green store? Correct. Okay. Who went with you to the green store? No one. Who did you speak to? I cannot recall the person's name. What day did you go to the green store? Probably in that week, I believe it was. 
Okay, and it was that trip to the green store, was that recorded? No, sir. Okay, is that in your notes? No, sir. Uh, I mean, excuse me, in your report? No, sir. Okay. Um, you testified that on the night, well, early morning of January 11th, you had a brief conversation with Deshaun Corbin. Yes, sir. Okay. Deshaun, other than that brief conversation with Deshaun Quarterman, did you speak to Deshaun Quarterman any more about as part of your investigation? No. Okay. Mr. Copeland, Kenneth Copeland, you said that you were involved in about four, uh, I believe the testimony was four formal interviews with Mr. Copeland. I believe so it was. Yes, sir. Okay. Did you have Mr. Copeland's phone number? No. Did Mr. Copeland have your phone number? No. Did you ever speak on the phone with Mr. Copeland as part of your investigation, other than other than that first night when Deshaun Quarterman called him and you? No, I can't recall talk to, talking to him on the phone. Okay. Or interviewing him on or interviewing him on the phone. No, sir. Well, okay. I want to be clear. I'm not saying just an interview. I'm saying talking to him on the phone. No, sir. So your testimony is you never spoke to not that I recall. Copeland on the phone. Not no, that sir. you recall or you never did it? I can recall if I ever did. So I think I did not talk to him over the phone. Okay. Are there any mentions in your notes? I mean, excuse me, your reports about speaking to Mr. Copeland on the phone? No, sir. All right. And Kelvin Watts. Um, you know him as Shell Kel, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did you ever interview Kelvin Watts as part of your investigation? Um, yes, I did. Okay. When was that? Um, I cannot recall when it was, but he, he you want to go into detail, but it was... I'm not asking you what was said. Okay. I'm just asking when you spoke to him. I cannot recall. It was, he was brought on an unrelated case. Okay, so as part of this investigation, I'm asking, not unrelated cases. Yeah, well, I asked him because he was he was there at the time of the incident. So I asked him around about questions, and he was like, I don't want to talk about so, it. So let me ask you this. In your investigation, were you able to determine Kelvin Watts' whereabouts on January 10th, 2015 at 7.20 p.m.? Yes, sir. I'm going to object based on hearsay. It would necessarily require Ever moved. And where was Kelvin Watts? He was at the location. This is that location. Where Donovan Thomas was shot? Yes, sir. How far away was he from Donovan Thomas? Your Honor, may we approach? I need to. You may. Thank you. Okay. Investigator Thorpe, how did you determine that Kelvin Watts was on the scene? Yeah. I'm going to object to assuming facts, not in evidence, and I'm going to ask that a proper foundation. That's uh, overruled. Um, the video surveillance uh, footage of a person coming inside the barbershop was presented to the media, placed on the news, and his father called me and notified me that the person I'm looking for, the assault rifle, is actually his son, Calvin Watts. Yep. Oh. Okay, let me let me try to clear this up. Okay, um, 
Investigator Thorpe, could you turn... Does Donovan Thomas have... Don, Donovan Thomas Sr. have multiple sons? I believe, I believe so, yes, sir. Okay. Would looking at your report refresh your recollection about who was in the barbershop? Uh, yes. Okay. Could you please turn to page three of your report where it talks about January 11, 2015? I'm assuming your page three is the same one I'm looking at. Do you see where it says on January 11, 2015 at approximately 1845 hours? Yes, sir. Okay. Could you read that to yourself and see if that re refreshes your recollection about who was in the barbershop with the gun? Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Who was, in fact, the individual that was in the barbershop with the gun? DeMonte Thomas. Okay. And is that another one of Donovan Thomas's? Seniors' children. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Kelvin Watts, I'm going to ask again, do you know whether he was at the scene or not? No, sir. You, you don't know one way or another? No, sir. Okay. And did you ever specifically ask him, without giving me the answer, did you ever specifically ask him when you interviewed him about a Check different case? Relevance as to whether he asked him, it would ever rule. Did you ever specifically ask him if he was at the scene or not? Yes, sir. Okay. And were you able to identify... You've seen the surveillance video, correct? Yes, sir. Were you able to identify all of the people that were standing by Mr. Donovan Thomas Jr. when he was shot? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Any other defense attorneys questions for this witness? Ms. Williams? Questions for this witness? Okay. Is there a redirect? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Detective Thorpe, you were asked on cross-examination about uh, an alibi that um, Mr. Copeland gave at the time of Donovan Thomas's murder. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. And do you recall exactly what it was that Mr. Copeland told you he was doing at the time of Donovan Thomas's murder? Yes, uh, if I recall correctly, he stated that he was home in the bed sleep. Okay. So, did he ever tell you that he was at the green store at the time of Donovan Thomas's murder? No, ma'am. Did he ever tell you he was at the McDonald's at the time of Donovan Thomas's murder? No, ma'am. Did Mr. Copeland offer you, let me ask you this, uh, was that information that he gave to you about his whereabouts captured on the video surveillance in the interview room? Yes, ma'am. Did Mr. Copeland ever tell you anything different about what he was doing or where he was at the time of Donovan Thomas's murder outside the interview room? No, ma'am. Now, how many, uh, you said you worked 300 homicides or more during your time with APD? Yes, ma'am. Uh, how is it that you give to the district attorney's office the results of your investigation? Do you normally just turn over your notepad or do you summarize it in a report? I summarize it in, re in, in a report. Okay. Uh, it's called the lead investigator supplement. You were also asked on cross-examination about the time it takes to get from the murder 
see to the green store. Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. Did Kenneth Copeland ever give you any indication that immediately before or immediately after the murder, he was at the green store? No, ma'am, he never gave me any indication. So. And, and all of your interactions with Kenneth Copeland, did he ever change his whereabouts as to where he was at the time of the murder? No, ma'am, he did not. You were also asked whether you were, you interviewed Kelvin Watts. Yes, ma'am. And when you said it was in the course of another investigation, do you recall what investigation that was? Yes, ma'am. What investigation was that? It was a homicide. A homicide of who? Uh, uh, I can't recall the victim's name. It was a young lady. Okay. Now, as it related to that particular homicide, did you interview Shannon Stilwell? Yes, ma'am. And when you were asked on cross-examination about about asking Kelvin Watts his whereabouts at the time Donovan Thomas was murdered, do you have um, any indication or did you see any indication on the surveillance footage that you saw that Kelvin Watts was there at the scene of the murder? Not def uh, definitively, no, ma'am. And regarding the victim of the murder that you were speaking to Kelvin Watts and that you interviewed Shannon Stillwell about, was that victim Tierra Jones? I believe so, yes, ma'am. When you When you take notes about what you learn in your investigation, do you include every negative outcome that you have? In other words, I went to this store and found nothing, this store and found nothing. Do you include all of that every time in your investigative summary? No, ma'am. Is, would you keep that information or share that information if you were asked about it? Yes, ma'am. You would share it? Yes, ma'am. So why don't you put all of the negative information, like in terms of not having found anything, in your investigative report? I try to keep my supplements relative to the investigation. So if they wish to do a follow-up, they say, okay, this is where you went. He got this. Let me go back and verify this. Verify that. You were asked on cross-examination as well about questions that you spoke with Mr. Copeland regarding. Yes, ma'am. And specifically, um, if he rented a, a, a grain invented. Yes, ma'am. Did you have any knowledge that Jeffrey Williams had rented a great woman <coughs> at that time? No, ma'am. None. And when you say that you met Kenneth Copeland at the back of police headquarters? Yes, ma'am. Did you see how he arrived? No, ma'am. Were you given information about how he arrived from you? Yes, ma'am. Were you given any information about who all was in the car when he arrived? No, ma'am.
did your questions regarding um, what kind of car that Mr. Copeland uh, may have owned or rented have anything to do with what you believe he arrived in? Yes, ma'am. You, when asked on cross-examination about Mr. Copeland's whereabouts at the time of Donovan Thomas's murder, do you know or have personal knowledge of where his cell phone records indicate he was at the time of the murder? Personal knowledge, do you? No, ma'am. I do not have personal knowledge. Did you see yourself um, and Mr. Copeland on the screen who asked on cross-examination about the fence? Jeffrey Williams defense exhibit number 241Z? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you see the cell phone on the table before you in front of Mr. Copeland? Yes, ma'am. Um, when I asked you earlier if Mr. Copeland carried a cell phone, uh, did you recall at the time that he had one during the interview? Um, I didn't recall he had one during the time, during the time of the interview. When you video record interviews such as this one and others, um, do, does the video recording of the interviews, do they serve to preserve information that you may not remember later? Yes, ma'am. And do you turn over all of the video recordings that you of interviews that you do to the district attorney's office so you should be provided the discovery? Yes, ma'am. Did Kenny Copeland make any effort to your knowledge to hide the phone that he had with him during the interview? No, ma'am. Sustained. Did you do you did you see Kenneth Copeland attempt to cover up the bomb? No, ma'am. Did you see Kenneth Copeland make any moves to conceal the bomb from your eyesight? No, ma'am. Do you recall whether Kenneth Copeland pulled out that phone during the interview and offered to show yourself, do you recall? No, I do not recall him doing that. Would uh, looking at that interview, a certain portion of it refresh your memory? Yes, ma'am. Do you know who uh, or where it is that you got the name Walter Lee Maddox? Um, I believe. Um... Without saying what someone said, just do you Law enforcement database. Okay. Prior to Kenneth Copeland telling you, did you know that his brother drove a Dodge Charger? No, ma'am. I'm going to show you what has been admitted as state's exhibit three seven eight Yankee Echo at time stamp. And I'm going to show it to you. Just to see if it refreshes your mind. Approaching at time stamp. 321 14. Oh. 
And since they're not playing sound, um, are you able to remember whether or not Kenneth Copeland pulled out his phone to show you information by looking at this exhibit? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is your memory refreshed after reviewing? Yes, ma'am. So what? Yes, ma'am. During the interview with Kenneth Copeland, And it's 378 Yankee Alpha. During that interview, did Kenneth Copeland pull out his cell phone and show you and offer to show you information? I believe he did, yes, ma'am. Did you see him pulling it out and extending it towards you? No, he was mostly keying it up himself. Was he keying it up himself in front of you under your mouth? Yes, ma'am. During the course of your investigation, was it common or uncommon for the people you were interviewing to essentially key up information under your nose? No, ma'am, it's not unusual. Did anyone else do that during the course of your investigation? No, ma'am. Sustained. When you turned your file over to the district attorney's office um, in 2016, uh, did you also turn over the recordings that included the interviews that you conducted? Yes, ma'am. And when you were asked about um, the Auto parts um, stores by at the auto parts store and the other places in the area. Um, nearby where the murder of Mr. Thomas occurred. At the time that you were investigating uh, the homicide. Do you recall what time it was or when in proximity to the murder that Kenneth Copeland said he was at the McDonald's? He said afterwards. And did he also give you information about persons who were at the McDonald's with him? Yes, ma'am. Through your investigation, did you attempt to and gain phone records for people who he said were at the McDonald's with him. Yes, ma'am. Was, according to um, Mr. Copeland, uh, Demikion Garlington at the McDonald's at the same time he was? Yes, ma'am. Did Mr. Copeland, to your memory, give you information during any one of his interviews about where he and other people went 
after leaving the McDonald's? Yes, ma'am. And where was that? Um, Jeffrey Williams um, residence. Okay. Did you determine the location of that residence after speaking with Mr. Copeland? Yes, ma'am. When you reviewed the video surveillance um, at the Texaco back in January when you first reviewed it, um, did what were you looking for? I was looking for uh, any one of those vehicles being in the parking lot near the gas pumps. When you first reviewed the surveillance footage at the Texaco, um, did you know what Diamante Kendrick looked like? No, ma'am. Did you find any evidentiary value when you first reviewed it or see or um, anything that you felt you needed to follow up on as it related to people going into the Texaco? No, not that afterwards. Okay. And when you say not until afterwards, what do you mean? Um, as we, um, when the case file was turned over to senior ADA Mike Sprinkle, we saw going over it and he noticed, he opened up the interior cameras and saw subjects of interest. Your Honor, he's not talking, go ahead. He, he saw people of, people of interest walking in. When you say he opened up the interior cameras, can you explain what you mean? Uh, yes, um, we downloaded both interior and exterior cameras. Uh, what I was looking for for the only exterior cameras was possible a tag for the vehicle that was used in the drive-by or that if the car posted up at the gas station, circled the block, how many people was inside the vehicle and if I can identify the people inside the vehicle. Um, Senior ADA Sprinkle, he said, let's go ahead and look and see who if anybody was inside the store. And he said, once he opened up the interior cameras, that's when we noticed people of interest that he started developing. Okay. Uh, does ADA Sprinkle, did, was his um, knowledge of that digital system uh, similar to yours or greater than yours? Greater than mine. Okay. At the time that Mr. Copeland left, the police department, after your interview, did he leave with his brother who was waiting for him? Yes, he did, ma'am. Do you know whether or not he was taken home by that brother? I do not, I do not know their, their destination afterwards. Now, when you looked at the video surveillance at the Texaco initially, did you find anything of evidentiary value? Did you recognize anything of evidentiary value? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. Were you able to get a license plate on any vehicles? No, ma'am. Did you do anything to intentionally hold back or withhold anything in the notes you talked about on cross-examination? Did you like intentionally destroy them or anything? No, ma'am. How long did you run the footage on the local news media in order to get information about this murder? I think, I think they branded the media, the, the news station makes that determination. I think they run it for like a week or two weeks. Okay. 
And if we put in a request, they'll run it again. Did you all put in a request for it to be run again? Do you recall? I don't recall. Did you put that in the report that you ran, that video for purposes of finding out who was in the barbershop at the time of the murder? Yes, ma'am. And what other kind of information, you were asked on cross what you didn't put in your report. What other kind of information did you put in your report? That was it. No, I mean in terms of, did you detail who you interviewed? Yes, ma'am, I detailed who I interviewed. Did you detail the times that you interviewed him? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail um, information that was shared during the interviews? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail um, your efforts to, for instance, follow up on who shot up Mr. Copeland's house? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail information about people that you initially investigated but ultimately chose or decided not to charge? Uh, I believe so, ma'am, yes. Did you put information about Quintez Griffin in your interview? Yes, ma'am. In your report? Yes, ma'am. Did you put the information about Spencer Wright in your report? Yes, ma'am. Did you put that Spencer Wright uh, initially gave you a name, Nicholas, in yes, your report? Yes, ma'am. Did you put information in your report about talking to Mr. Hendricks? Yes, ma'am. Did you put in your report what Mr. Hendricks told you? Yes, ma'am. Did you put in your report information about talking to um, Mr. Sanders? Yes, ma'am. Did you put in your report what he told you? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report each time that you talked with Mr. Copeland prior to 2016? Yes, ma'am. Why did you detail each time as opposed to just putting one time? Because each time it was a different time and different interview. Mm -hmm. Did you detail in your report the type of shell casings that were found on the scene of the Donovan Thomas murder? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report the type of shell casings that were found at Van Ira. Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report whether you conducted an informal or formal interview with Diamante Thomas? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report what Diamante Thomas told you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report information um, regarding the video surveillance that you captured from Hair Unlimited Barbershop? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report social media posts that you investigated? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report uh, the type of victim, I mean, I'm sorry, the type of vehicle um, described by persons that you interviewed? Yes, ma'am. Did you put in your report information about what your investigation revealed were retaliatory shootings after the murder of Donovan Thomas? Yes, ma'am. Did you only interview Kenneth Copeland while he was outside of custody and voluntarily came in, came in or did you interview him after he had been taken into custody for, for other things? After he'd been taken into custody for other things. Did you, did, did you detail in your report going to Hartsfield-Jackson uh, Airport to try and find information provided to you by 
Kenneth Copeland. Yes, ma'am. Did you detail the date that you went to Hartsville, Jackson? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail who went with you to Hartsville, Jackson? Yes, ma'am. Who went with you to Hartsville, Jackson? Uh, Detective Summer Benton. What date did you go to Hartsville, Jackson? Oh, I can't recall. I can look at the note. Okay. Okay. I'm showing you your report. Okay. So. June 11th, 2015. Did you detail in your report whether who it was that suggested meeting you at the homicide office the first time that you spoke with Kenneth Copeland? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report that you requested Kenneth Copeland to meet you there? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report that he agreed? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report that you were not able to find uh, any information about the rental that Jeffrey Williams did when you and Summer Benton went? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report the date and time that you interviewed Demikion Garlington? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report what he told you? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report that you interviewed Justin Cobb? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report the date and time that you interviewed him? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report um, the names of the persons that Kenneth Copeland gave you that were people you found of interest in the investigation? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report where it was that Kenneth Copeland advised you that he got that information? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report um, information about a social media uh, site called Death to Snake Ends? Yes, ma'am. Right. And did you detail in your report um, what it was? Your Honor, he was asked on cross-examination what he did not put in his report. I'm asking what information he did put. So I don't know how it's cumulative when this has not been covered by me, but it was covered on cross. I have a rule. Did you detail in your report when it was that you saw that social media posting about death to snake ends? Yes, ma'am. Did you detail in your report who all was present uh, at the time you interviewed uh, Diamante Kendricks? Yes, ma'am. And when was it that you interviewed Diamante Kendricks? Do I you recall? I can recall the exact date. Which showing you your report refresh your memory. Yes, ma'am. It was October 6th. Of 2015? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. October 6th of 2015. Did you detail the time that yes, you interviewed? Yes, ma'am. Why did you detail something so simple as the time that you interviewed him? You know, it was that time, the time that we started and the time we ended. Did you detail in your report that um, Spencer Wright admitted giving you the false name of Nicholas Robinson? Yes, ma'am. And did you detail in your report when and against whom you took out arrest warrants for this case? Yes, ma'am. Right. Just one second.
other than Mr. Copeland's brother, did you see anybody else um, accompanying Mr. Copeland at the time that he came to see you? No, ma'am. Did you detail in your report that Mr. Copeland came to see you with his girlfriend, Deshaun Porter? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, um, with the exception of a matter, I'd just like to approach the bench about this. Maybe that may be the only okay. question I have. All right, come on up.